Hello everybody, this is David, and welcome to this video on how to use the, T the PMOD TMP2 with the Basis 3. Now the PMOD TMP2, it has the same ADT7420 temperature sensor that's on the Nexus A7. Uh, the previous video I did, the I2C with the temperature sensor, utilized the Nexus A7, and I mentioned that you can use the TMP2 with the Basis 3. Um, you just need to create a different constraints file, but then there's also an issue and if you just um, Create the same circuit and put it on the basis 3 create the basis 3 constraints file and hook up the PMOD TMP2 through a PMOD on the basis 3 it will not work properly and the, and um, I'll talk about the reason why um, The reason why is right here and the top part we have the ADT 7420 connection on the Nexus A7 and you can see the chip the SCL and SDA lines they have they each have a pull-up resistor there's two 1k pull-up resistors for the temperature sensor on the Nexus A7 on the PMOD there are no pull-up resistors so you have to do something a little different and it's not difficult and I'll show you right now so all, simply all you have to do once you create your constraints file for the basis 3 is you have to add these two lines down here you'll see at the bottom right here the, the these are the normal two PMOD connector uh, connections right here uh, in the basis 3 master XDC file you need to add this line right here which you can model the PMODs to have pull-ups just like the pull-up resistors on the Nexus so this is how you solve the problem of that um, and I went ahead and uh, well what I did for this project is I did something a little differently you can see the modules over here I have the same four modules that I used on the Nexus A7 the uh, the clock generation for 200 kilohertz there's no change to this module I have the same exact I squared C master except I took the reset functionality out it's really not needed so I took that out and then also there was an output for the SDA direction line. I took that from being an output and just put it as a wire because it doesn't need to be outputted. That's the simple changes here. Um, you also notice I have this temperature converter right here because what I wanted to do was be able to switch between Celsius and Fahrenheit on the on the seven segment displays. So I added this temperature converter. It simply just takes in uh, 8 bits of Celsius and outputs 8 bits of Fahrenheit by going through these three modules here. Uh, the first module is multiplied by 9, so it just takes in the 8-bit Celsius data, uh, multiplies it by 9, and outputs a 16-bit uh, value, which then goes into the divide by 5. We input the 16-bit value here, divide that by 5, output an 8-bit value, and then we send it through the add 32 and what comes out is the actual uh, Fahrenheit data. So we have C and F and then, so that is, let me show you the top module here. Simply, um, I took the, uh, there was a, a W underscore data, so a, a data line that came from the I squared C master that is now called C data for Celsius data and that goes into the seven segment display uh, control. The uh, Celsius data also goes into the temperature converter, comes out as Fahrenheit data, which also goes into the seven segment display. It's also, um, there's a little multiplexer down here. Uh, using a switch, I added a switch to the design so we could switch between Fahrenheit and Celsius data to put those uh, eight bits onto the LEDs. The switch is also going into the seven segment control. Here it is. So now we have two data inputs, uh, C data and F data and the switch. So we need two um, binary to BCD conversions. We also, uh, instead of just tens and ones, I now have Celsius tens, Celsius ones, Fahrenheit tens, Fahrenheit ones, and all the binary to BCD conversions for that. Uh, no, no changes here, uh, just adding one parameter for the letter F and then down here in the case, um, well for the driving the segments, 
it's simply just creating if statements for the switch, right? If the switch is high, then that's all Fahrenheit stuff. And if it's low, it'll be Celsius. So we want F to show this won't change it's just, uh, the degree symbol. And then so for each digit for ones, if the switch is high, we'll show the Fahrenheit ones. If it's low, uh, Celsius ones. And if the switch is high here, we'll show the Fahrenheit tens. Else we'll show the Celsius tens. And uh, I've already programmed it up. And uh, well, I got to rerun the synthesis and stuff and I'll show you it working on the board. All right, here's the basis three with the PMOD TMP2 connected into PMOD JC of the basis three. Right now we are displaying uh, Celsius. I don't know why it, it's kind of hard to pick up the light, but you can see it's 20 degrees Celsius. If I make this switch, right the switch we got 68 degrees, I'm trying to block the light here, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can see you can switch back and forth. And now, like last time, I didn't have a way to adjust it. Now let's see if I can get this going without burning the chip. There you go. Put a little flame to it. There we go. The temperature, we're up to 82, 84. Went up to 80 degrees Fahrenheit this time, which is 27 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> Well, there you go. That's if you have the basis three and the T, uh, PMOD TMP2, you know, just simply put the pull up true model, uh, the pull up for the uh, PMOD, and it'll work with the same exact circuit as before. Or you can use this one to switch between uh, Fahrenheit and Celsius. Thanks for watching.